Maybe if I hold really still, they won't see me. Dang it. Today, we're at Mount Vernon, which is owned and operated by the Mount Vernon's Lays Association. Today, we're gonna to be checking out George Washington's gardens. This upper garden was created for the enjoyment of the Washington's guests. It had a large variety of plants in their highest state of cultivation, showing off George Washington's skill as a gardener. Washington planted vegetables and fruit trees at the center of each large planting bed. The beds were lined with boxwood, ornamental trees, and a wide band of flowering plants. The combination of the attractive landscape with the food production demonstrated the beauty of domestic agriculture. Here in the upper garden, Washington also seems to have highlighted our Revolutionary War alliance of France, clipping and trimming the boxwood around me to represent the French fleur-de-lis. Aren't you glad we're filming at Mount Vernon? I know I am. So Washington had lived during a time period that many scientists refer to as the Little Ice Age, and that is just to say that the climate was colder. That also meant that if you lived here in Northern Virginia and you were a, a common person, you might not have seen a lot of oranges or limes or lemons on the dinner table. But George Washington had a very clever way of cultivating and growing tropical fruit here at Mount Vernon. As the focal point of the upper garden, George Washington created this greenhouse, or sometimes referred to as a hot house. It was in this greenhouse that George Washington cultivated tropical plants that could not survive the harsh Virginia climate. When Washington began to plan the building of the greenhouse in 1784, there were very few in North America and none near Mount Vernon. Although he had seen several during his travels, he was unsure of the mechanics that heated the floor. Washington decided to write his aide, Colonel Tillman, on details about Margaret Tillman Carroll's greenhouse that was located outside of Baltimore. Combining this new information with his observations and recollections, Washington built his very own greenhouse. This small botanical garden, which is located behind Mount Vernon's spinning house, was not part of Washington's larger landscape scheme. However, this garden was near and dear to his heart. He would often tend to it himself, and he would experiment with different varieties of plants here in this garden. One of Washington's main goals for this cultivated space was to see if particular plants could survive Virginia's harsh climate. Foreign governments, friends, admirers, and even strangers sent him a variety of seeds, bulbs, slips, and cuttings from all over the world. Washington made reference to this botanical garden several times, calling it either the little garden or the little garden behind the salt house. He experimented with different plants, testing them here before planting them elsewhere. He correctly identified that both oats and alfalfa would increase his field's productivity if planted elsewhere on the property. So let us talk about the lower garden. While George Washington oversaw all aspects of the upper garden, Martha Washington oversaw this lower garden or kitchen garden, allowing her to keep fresh fruits and vegetables on her dining room table all year long. Martha instructed Mount Vernon's hired and enslaved gardeners of the types and quantities of fruits and vegetables that were needed in order for her enslaved cooks to turn into meals. Kitchen gardens, like this one, would have been essential during this time to support life. In fact, many homes around the city would have had one. This particular garden has been cultivating vegetables since the 1760s. Well, that was fun. That's deep. Thank you for joining us for another lesson on the road. Next time you come to George Washington's Mount Vernon, make sure you check out all the beautiful gardens and landscapes that make up this plantation. That's Mr. Graham. That's Mr. Gimby. That's Mr. Raymond. We'll catch you guys next time. You know what, you're right, it is deep. Are these radishes? Uh, my mom made radishes. Ugh. As a focal point of the upper garden, Washington Washington planted large... So it's important to remember that Washington lived during, historically... Oh, I'll try again. <laughs> In this greenhouse, he was able to cultivate tropical...
many homes around the city would have had one much like this. I don't like that. Nope, not like this. This is a pretty big one, comparatively. Ooh. We'll try again. I hit the, hit the head in the orange. How do we keep moving over? I don't, I don't understand. Know. Oh my god, I just drank my spit. That's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can smell the grapes. It smells good. As a focal point of the upper garden, Washington created this commanding greenhouse. That was fantastic. Is that it? No. Oh, I was gonna say. No. <laughs> you said that's, that's fantastic. It. I, had, I had a I had an absolute brain fart. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you had more.